Whale, hello there. Welcome back to the Whale Channel. My name's Dee. I'm Aoife, and we are still on lockdown. Beep, beep, beep. So we have promised for a hot minute. The best part of a year. Literally. We promised this in February and it's now January 2021. Sauce. So what we are doing is we're gonna finally talk about VIP tours in Walt Disney World that we've experienced. Dessert parties in Walt Disney World that we've experienced. We, I, I haven't done any VIP parties or anything in Disneyland so I can't talk about that unfortunately. And we haven't done that in a Disneyland Paris so this will be a purely Walt Disney World focused video. What's worth your money, what's not, and what we want to try the next time. So the first one we're going to talk about is the first one that I've ever done, which was the Not So Scary Halloween Party, which is an after hours event, which is a separate ticket to your park ticket, which costs about a hundred dollars it can range from 89 dollars up to 130 i think i cannot say for certain it depends on what date you go so if you go start of september to late september it's cheaper obviously and then if you go halloween night is the most expensive night and i think the two saturdays before halloween it's also quite expensive the main thing of this is that adults get to dress up while you can't wear masks and stuff you can dress up as characters we did Disney Band and we will insert pictures here of us as the cutest Disney Band ever. I loved our costumes for the last time we went and no one got it. And I know I keep complaining about this every time we You mean Alvin and the Chipmunks? Oh, you mean sadness and joy and disgust? That one made sense. That one made slight sense. I'll give you that one. No, sorry. It was sadness, disgust and anger. If someone just saw the colours and didn't see our bottom half, it would have made sense. But Not So Scary is, I'm going to say, it's one of my favourite things to do in Disney. I was so annoyed that we couldn't do it this year or in last year sorry in 2020 because obviously safety first. I did think it was worth the money. It's a fun event. I do think it's worth the money. Oh you do? I thought you said you didn't think it was worth the money and I was like what? No. I do think it's worth the money. I don't think we got as much candy as we possibly could have but I think we got to do a lot and it was a lot of fun seeing people with all their costumes and things. It was a really good atmosphere. I love just watching people go around in their costumes and getting all the joy and the little kids <laughs> those kids in costumes makes me happy and seeing the big family ones makes me so happy we saw a family that had the same costume that we did and they 100 percent won yeah they had a webby and everything they just won it was so much cuter it was so much cuter when me and sandra went to not so scary which is Mickey's Halloween party in Disneyland. There was an entire party. I think there was about eight of them who did Zootopia. Nice. Every single character. And it was amazing because me and Sandra went as Nick Wilde and Judy Hopps. And they outdid us again. So also, I'm just going to say this here. There's there's something so, <laughs> there's something with Not So Scary where I don't get the attention I deserve. Every time I've gone <laughs> and I've put a ton of effort into my costume, which subsequently means I put a ton of effort into Sandra's costume, Sandra gets all of the praise and I get nothing <laughs> every time. <laughs> to be fair, that bled into uh, the villains party as well. <laughs> Like, yeah, a, th a villain's party. Like, I was obviously hands and no one got it. <laughs> to be fair, though, I think that was because my costume was very obvious. Yours was so good. You know. The after hours party, we only did one, which was the Magic Kingdom one, which had the villain's overlay of it. Not as worth it as Mickey's Not So Scary. It's a different vibe and we dressed up, but a lot of people didn't, which kind of takes away from us. We did get to go on quite a bit, but there's different focuses I think when you go from not so scary versus the after hours so with not so scary you have a lot more nighttime entertainment you have the trick-or-treating you have the costumes with the after hours yeah you get food there's free ice cream and drinks but there's not really a heavy there's not the emphasis on costumes there's no real nighttime entertainment bar that one parade which was pretty cool but that was only one thing oh no they had the show as well and they had an overlay on pirates yeah, so um, don't pay attention to what I just said, but it is a different vibe. It is a different vibe and even the overlay on Pirates wasn't as good as the one that was at Not So Scary. It wasn't as interactive. The one at Not So Scary, the characters really kind of fed from the crowd and it was a bit more 
give and take with what was happening so it felt a bit more like you were in it where the one at the villains they kind of just talked at you so it wasn't really the same vibe it was very scripted and um, i wouldn't say the villains is worth the money unless that is the only night you are going to go to the park if you were just in orlando and you were just going to go do a, an after hours party to go to magic kingdom one evening it's probably worth your money because you'll get on everything you'll do everything you'll get to try the majority of the snacks you want to try as well as along with some extra special ones but if you you already have a ticket to the parks it there's not enough extras to make it worth it whereas with not so scary there's enough extras yeah it's a whole experience it's a whole there's different overlays on the rides the characters are in costumes um you've got there's a lot more rare characters to meet as well exactly that's the other thing with villet with the after hours there's no character meet and greets except the ones that are housed so you can meet like the princesses and you can meet give me another meet and greet that's inside in magic kingdom i don't have any uh mickey and minnie mickey and minnie there you go thank you and tink i don't actually think tink was up i think tink closed during the party but that's it so i think uh the mickey's not so scary would be the event that i would pick in the magic kingdom but i would consider doing an after hours event in animal kingdom I think because I do think that could be a lot of fun. I do think Pandora, Pandora at night gets very busy. So if you could do an after hours event where Pandora wasn't as busy, you'd really enjoy it. Also, just Pandora at night, man. Oh, it's so beautiful. Think of the photos you'd get in Pandora at night if the crowd level was much lower. Aoife already has plans for next time we get to go. She has a list of photos she wants to do. Most of them are in Pandora at night. <laughs> if you want to know of our like to-do list because we go off in tangents, we'll pop that in the top corner right now. But let's keep focused. Yes, After Hours in Animal Kingdom. I don't think I'd bother with Hollywood Studios or the other one, Epcot. I don't think I'd bother with Epcot. Hollywood Studios, maybe it would depend on what the After Hours was. If it was a specific Star Wars After Hours, it could be good. I don't know. I know they have an early morning to get on all the Toy Story stuff. And I know you love Slinky Dog, that people literally use that just to go in Slinky Dog 10 times. But I don't think that would be worth it. I don't think there's enough in Hollywood Studios that would be open. Sorry, I would just go on Slinky Dog over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but I'm not paying 90 quid for that. So the next thing that we did was the Star Wars dessert party in Hollywood Studios. This is the, I, this is the only dessert party I think I've ever done. But I really enjoyed the Star Wars dessert party. I do think it's the best out of the lot of them from reading what you get. Um, I enjoyed the dessert party. I do think it was a little bit rushed. A little bit, but I don't know if that was us more than them. Do you know what? I think it was the actual thing because we got there as soon as we could. We sat down. We, you know, stalked some stormtroopers for a little bit. We met your dad. <laughs> My granddaddy. We had a moment. <laughs> And then, you know, we got a couple of drinks. Shots, 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 everybody! But yeah, it was, it was, I don't think there's enough time for what you spend on it, but I don't think any of them have that time. Like, I think that we possibly maybe did it wrong, where we went up and just picked a few bits and then sat down and ate them. Like, really, you should just go up and pick everything and bring it back to the table and just eat and gorge. The desserts were nice. Some of them were weird. They were, they were very much, you know, all-inclusive desserts. Yeah, like it was nothing magical about the desserts. Oh, though, to be honest, that um, ice cream, the freeze dry ice cream was pretty good. Is that worth what you spent? No, but next time would I be very tempted to do the Epcot one because I think that's paced better. Like you have more time just sitting, having your drinks and your cocktails. I think that's because it's outside as well. I think so. And then you have the fireworks, which would be the new show, hopefully. And then after everything's done, you go on Frozen Ever After. So you're not trying to do the things during the party. You're doing it after. I think that might make more sense. I'd consider that one. I would also consider one of the Magic Kingdom ones just to say I did it. But I don't hold out much hope for it being amazing. Either do I. I don't think you get your bang for your book because obviously there's no booze involved. If I'm paying over 100 quid to get some desserts, they either need to be immaculate or they need, you need to give me some type of booze included. And B, you don't, the views aren't amazing. You can get the same views by getting there 20 minutes early. I will say as well for the Star Wars dessert party, the views weren't great. Ah, the, that's the best view you can get. Yeah, but it's not this amazing view that's better than anywhere else in the place. You do get to sit down. So you're sitting on the ground 
And I will say, if you're someone who has mobility issues, if you get out at the front of the crowd, there was a little ledge you could sit on, which would have been quite nice, but you know, we're all able-bodied adults and just sat on the, the normal ground. It's not the most comfortable in the world. But like, that's the ideal place to watch those fireworks. And it's completely sectioned off for the dessert party. Whereas with the Magic Kingdom ones, you're either in the terrace over to the right of it. This is my right, yes. Uh, the right of the castle, or you're over kind of back in front of Casey's, in front of the left. So I don't think they're amazing. Yeah, but it's, it's not even that they're better. It's just that what you're paying for isn't for the view of the fireworks or the show. I think you're paying for the food. And you're paying for the experience of the dessert party more than where you get to see. That would make me say the Magic Kingdom one isn't worth it. Yeah, I, I would agree. And I don't necessarily think I would recommend the Star Wars one either. Really? Yeah, like it was fine. But for the amount of money, the amount of money that we spent, I expected a lot more from it. Yeah, agreed, actually. If it was cheaper, I probably would consider it. But for the price, I don't think it's worth the price. It is the cheapest out of all of the dessert parties, the Star Wars one is. Uh, and it's like the area that you're in is just like a roped off area in the room and the chairs were plastic and the tablecloths were paper and stuff like that. It seemed very just thrown together. For the amount of money that we spent on it, I expected it to be a little bit more luxurious, maybe. <laughs> I, li I expected to have a chair. <laughs> <laughs> well, I expected a real chair, not a fold up plastic chair. All right, so let's talk about the big kahuna that we did in the last trip. Which was the... The VIP tour. Actual VIP. Yeah, we did the... Food tour. I'll get the name of it now. I took notes for this back in February, so let's see if I can figure out what these notes mean. The VIP tour we did in February, the big kahuna, was called Taste the Magic Kingdom Park. <laughs> VIP tour. It was really fun. Yeah, it's basically we went in, they brought us around a lot of the big points of food in the Magic Kingdom. So we went to Casey's Corner, we went to be our guest. We went to Skipper Canteen um, and we also went around to where they have the turkey legs and... Doll Whip, we went to Aloha Isle and we went to Tomorrowland Terrace. Uh, we actually did a lot, like there was a lot of little sections. We got to taste a lot of food as well. Yeah, like it was really nice. Um, Like I took some notes. I think we were intending to do something different because these notes make no sense to this video. But yeah, we got a really nice kind of plate of food in Skipper Canteen, which was really lovely. And fun fact, the spring rolls for the spring roll cart are actually made in Skipper Canteen. Oh yeah. Oh, also, I remember we were welcomed in and they were like, hey, everyone come in, sit down, get yourself a coffee, a water, a Mickey-shaped blueberry muffin and a Mickey-shaped cinnamon roll. To which me and Eva were like, yes, bitch. The only problem was they gave us nice water on that stop and then we got Dasani later on. <laughs> but it was really nice. We got to try the grey stuff in the Magic Kingdom for the new dinner style. Try the grey stuff. It's all right. <laughs> I, I don't know why people rave about it. It's really mediocre. <laughs> if it was one of those things that was part of a dessert, I wouldn't be mad at it. But as a dessert on its own. It is now part of a dessert, but it used to be a dessert on its own. We also got the turkey legs or pieces of the turkey leg, which from when I was a kid, I remember getting it and thinking it was absolutely delicious. And then I tried it. <laughs> and it was gross. It was not the taste that I remembered when I was a child. It was like super heavily smoked. <sighs> It was rough. Did not like the flavour at all. We got the Dole Whip. Delish. Can never say no to a Dole Whip. Sorry, the funny story of the Dole Whip is uh, Dee had brought a tub of tagine with her. And if you don't know, this is spicy stuff that people put on. A Dole Whip. It's, it's like the most amazing hack. It is delicious. <laughs> she then put it on everyone who was on the tour's Dole Whip who wanted it. <laughs> and the tour guide was standing there being like, that's not part of the tour. <laughs> but okay. It's like, I know it's a Disney hack. Okay. They were both lovely though. They were so nice. We have the cutest photo with our tour guide that we will insert here. They were just so fun and so lovely. We did get to try some of the plant-based stuff when we were in Tomorrowland Terrace and that was quite nice. I quite enjoyed that. Yeah, it was actually 
I no, it was nice. There was a like a coleslaw thing on it that I didn't like, but the the like plant based burger was really delicious. Yeah, the actual plant based substitute was pretty good. The other really nice thing for normal people, I think we got a bit scammed out at the end of this, but that's a different story. Is at the very end of your tour, they normally give you a recipe they're working on to try to get feedback for. So you can get something that they're working on for like the Halloween party or the Christmas party or just something new. We got <laughs> given something that was released the night before for the villains party that we were at. That didn't go down well. That didn't go down well at the villains party when you look up reviews. Uh, so that was really disappointing. It was beautiful. Uh, was it? <laughs> it was beautiful to look at. It was stunning to look at. It tasted fine. But it wasn't something special. But normally when you go on the tour, they do give you an up and coming thing that you're not allowed to take pictures of. Or, and you shouldn't say anything. So we're fine because it was released beforehand. It was released when I was out. Um, but like, I think the tour is well worth it. I enjoyed that tour. Our tour guides were incredible. Immaculate. They were so much fun. They were just a good laugh. Everyone seemed to get on as well. It was a really nice bunch of people. Normally with those VIP tours, you're getting people on the same mentality as you if you're, obviously if you're watching this video, you're a Disney nerd. So you like going to the parks, you like getting that bit, little bit of extra. I've done three different tours. I have loved each and every one of them. So I've done this one. I've done the Keys of the Kingdom, which is super fun. I'll pop that in the top corner with Sandra. That one, you just go around and get a really in-depth knowledge and experience of the Magic Kingdom and how it works. So we went down into the, uh, what are they called? The Utilidors? Yes. We kind of went around to a lot of the same places as we did for the food tour. So when I did Keys of the Kingdom, we did go backstage to be our guests and stuff. So I saw all those before, but it's still really cool. Keys of the Kingdom, we did see all of the parade floats up close. Oh, that'd be fun. It's super cool. You can't take any pictures, but they're amazing. I, it doesn't matter. Do you know what? I'd love to do one that does the costumes. I'd love to go in where they have the costumes and see them. I, we walked by it. It's a deep room. That would be amazing. <laughs> we walked by it in the utility room. It's very deep. I just, let me, let me loose. Let me loose in there for 20 minutes, please. Disney, please. And then um, the last tour I did was, I did one in Ma in Animal Kingdom, which was called A Path Last Traveled. I have that as well as a vlog, I'll pop up here. It's super long though, so just beware. But it was three different VIP experiences that they lumped together. There was one to do with the elephants. I know for a fact that elephants one is pretty cheap and it is amazing. And I would recommend you basically get closer to the elephants in the safari, talk about their well-being, talk about how they're raised, learn loads about the different elephants. It's amazing. And then another part of it is you go backstage to the feeding quarters. You get to go to the veterinary, behind the scenes of the veterinary section in the Open Rafiki's Planet Watch. So you get to go up there behind the scenes, see some animals. They have a house pig. They have like a pet pig <laughs> up there that just hangs out and is like a little babe. <gasps> I love pigs. Oh. Like I would, in a heartbeat, I would do the Animal Kingdom tours. So I think if I had to recommend any of them, I would do Animal Kingdom tours, food, and then Keys of the Kingdom. But I really like the Disney food because if you watch our other video, I like to cook. <laughs> what did you think of the tour, Aoife? Of the food tour that we experienced together? Like I'm not a massive foodie and I'm, I'm, I don't have the greatest stomach for food. Um, I'm quite cautious about what I eat because I might tummy doesn't agree with everything but I really enjoyed it and um, there was just nice portions of everything uh, they kept you really well hydrated I will say that and you kind of got to see a little bit of behind the scenes like they had a really cool like fact about how they go about the food and like growing the food and the fact that they use the waste as uh, fuel for some of the buses so I will say if you're someone that's into food or someone that's into becoming a chef it could be super interesting as a tour I would 100% recommend it but I probably probably wouldn't do it again. I think it's a one and done. Yeah, I think most of the tours are one and done. Like, I don't think I'd do the Keys of the Kingdom tour again. I think you would if I asked you to. <laughs> Yeah, if uh, my levels was literally the end of my sentence, unless Aoife really wanted to do them, then I probably would. I, I don't think even if someone really wanted to do it, I'd probably send them to do it rather than going with them for that one. Though. Really? Yeah, probably. I'd still, I'd go do it if someone wanted to do it. I'd be like, yeah, sure, baby. 
food but i would say i had a good experience with that vip tour and it would make me consider doing another one yeah i've never had a bad experience with a vip tour but yeah that's all the vip experiences we have if you have any questions want to know a bit more in depth pop it down in the comments and we will answer as best we can stay tuned for future trips where we will probably more than likely do vip tours again most definitely man it's what we do because <laughs> we're those people we need a bit more extra a bit more but thanks for millions for watching if you like the video give it a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe and follow us on instagram and twitter at whale underscore pod underscore and we will see you on the other side bye peace bye